I stopped taking Flomax and oh my God, the loads came back to life. Wow. So listen, you know, um, everybody is different. And when you go talk to your doctor about some of the stuff that we're doing here, some of them are going to have negative opinions about it. And some of them are going to have positive experiences about it. But I love those of you who take matters into your own hands and say, you know what? Maybe the Flomax isn't working for me. <laughs> and this gentleman, Galant, Gal, Galant, decided to stop it and things are working better. So everybody's different. That may not be your story. Flomax may be providing you with everything that you need, um, but for him it wasn't and he got off of it and I, and I, and I applaud you for that. Because th that really is a great transition into our next piece. Because uh, every time you take a over-the-counter medication, like your allergy medicine, like your Tylenol, like your Advil, I think that we take it so much and we see it so regularly. We think of this as just really good, you know, almost like a vitamin, but those things are not vitamins. And so what I want to do is kind of talk about some of the mechanisms of actions and why that interferes with your erection. Why taking a Tylenol, why taking the BC powder or the goody powder or whatever it is that you're taking, you know, thinking, gosh, I have a really bad headache. Let me take this really quickly. When first thing you should do is go hydrate, right? Like maybe you were dehydrated. It's so freaking hot out. Maybe you need to start there first, but so often we'll just take one really quick and, and think that it's okay. But unfortunately, things can happen with that. As a matter of fact, I feel like Tylenol and acetaminophen, women take it a lot, kids take it a lot, men are taking it a lot. And I feel as though most of us have no real idea how acetaminophen can actually go wrong. And that's why you really, really need to be in a situation where you need it instead of just being one of those things. Well, you know, uh, let me just take this real quick. So I think First, in order to really conquer this 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 conversation, let's let's one talk about the top two that I think that people don't really realize, but they will interfere with your erection to the point where you might look up the next day and not be getting one and think something's wrong with you and really be in a depressed state. And it may have just been even the Aleve, even the Advil, even the ibuprofen that you took the night before. And so here we have, you know, as we age, you're going to ache a little more. And as we age, you might take these medications more and more. But as you age, you also have things going on in your blood vessels that are happening. And then you put this stuff on top of it, and it can really throw you off for weeks, months, so on and so forth. So if you happen to be one of the people who just kind of takes Tylenol, Advil, and all of that every now and then without a thought, I want you to start slowing down and thinking about it. So acetaminophen, actually popularly known as Tylenol, in other countries they call it paracimol. Um, you see it a lot in like the, the Theraflu preparations. A lot of the flu, sinus, cold types of medicines, they mix it in there. Well, I think the problem with acetaminophen that we don't talk about enough is that it interferes with two things. The first thing is it interferes with something called glutathione peroxidase. Say it with me, glutathione peroxidase. Glutathione is an essential, uh, is, is, is an essential component of your body's natural detoxification system, right? So if we knock out glutathione peroxidase, then your body isn't going to be making glutathione. Now, there are whole books written on glutathione and how there are some scientists and some doctors who think every person should be taking glutathione in some particular way. So when you go and wipe out your body's glutathione because you're taking Tylenol, you're creating a whole bunch of situations for yourself, right? Because remember, when I talk about all of the fake estrogens that we are encountering, how men are kind of constantly being bombarded with female hormones and food that will feminize them and bring their female hormones up. Well, if that's the case, now all of a sudden you got those female hormones that are up and now you've wiped out your body's ability to really kind of clear them in a timely fashion. So they're sitting around in your body longer than they should because your body's liver, your body's natural detoxification system isn't working at high 
levels, right? So when you're taking 600 milligrams and 500 milligrams and a thousand milligrams of this stuff a day, you're actually chipping away at your body's ability to remove estrogen, which are, which are feminizing hormones from your body and other toxins. So that's the, one of the big problems with Tylenol and acetaminophen. But the other problem, the other way that it interferes with erectile function is that it decreases nitric oxide availability. It decreases nitric oxide availability. It actually interferes with something called ENOS, which is the, 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 the catalyst that's actually going to make nitric oxide. So when we talk about nitric oxide causing, helping cause the blood vessels to relax and constrict when they need to, but relax to fill up with blood so you can get an erection, relax to fill up with blood so you can get regular blood pressure flowing through your body. If that's blocked, now all of a sudden you're having erectile issues, but there's also some studies that indicate that it will cause your blood pressure to rise. And why is that? Because of the nitric oxide, right? So be very mindful when you're taking Tylenol because that's the number one unknown interferer of erections that we don't really talk about. The second one is going to be acetam uh, is going to be ibuprofen. Good old fashioned Advil and Aleve and the generic one we get at CVS and Walgreens. Because remember, those are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They are associated with an increased risk of heart disease, of cardiovascular events, right? And why is that? It's for the exact same reason that it interferes with erectile function because it interferes with nitric oxide production. Those blood vessels can't do what they were designed to do and you can precipitate a cardiovascular event. I don't know if you remember, but there was something called Vioxx. Vioxx ran into trouble because that's what was happening. People were having cardiovascular events. The problem with ibuprofen and, and um, you know, when we've talked about Prilosec in the past is that they've known this for a really long time. And so they've even toyed with the concept of maybe we should make an ibuprofen that actually helps support nitric oxide levels instead of decreasing them, but they haven't released that for whatever reason. You know, it it's almost starts to feel like some of these uh, drug companies actually want people sick so they can continue to make medications, continue to make a little money, right? The other one, I don't think that we talk about enough are opiates. And we can put opiates, we can put cocaine right together, but opiates, cocaine use, um, we also have been associated with cardiovascular disease, but they also can cause erectile dysfunction. And it's by the exact same mechanism. It decreases nitric oxide production. So I want to remind you of these things because I want you to know that so many of these medications, as we go through and every week I introduce some different ones to you that you may not have known can interfere with erectile health, so many of them are doing it because they're interfering with nitric oxide production. Some of them are interfering with hormone production. Some of them are interfering with hormone clearance, you know, getting rid of, of toxic forms of estrogen and toxic forms of testosterone. But a lot of them are interfering with good old fashioned cardiovascular system because the cardiovascular system and the erectile system are the exact same system, right? So we'll start you know, every week I might give you a different one that you may not have known of that you might be on or someone you love might be on because as I trigger in you the knowledge that it's associated with erectile function, then you should know erectile dysfunction, then you should know that it's also something that interferes with cardiovascular health, right? So we can talk about erectile function all day long, right? Nobody's ever going to shut my channel down because of that. When we start to talk about cardiovascular health all day long, that becomes an issue. So we will continue to talk about erectile health because as I help you with erectile function, I am helping you with cardiovascular function. Okay. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense.